The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 157 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, I apologize for the jet engine in the background, but it is hot out, and I am not turning the air off. Oh, dude, it's uh, we're, we're like race car drivers in Atlanta right now. We're, we're burning through 3,000 calories tonight. It's happening. Yeah. It's toasty. It's toasty in Michigan today. You know, the I first didn't, time, I think, all year. Really. I didn't even realize that the Atlanta race was that warm until I read the stuff about Bubba Wallace after the race, but... Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't watch any of the pre-race or anything like that because there hasn't been much lately anyway, but I just like skipped, I, w- I watched it delayed. So I skipped right to the green flag and that was it. And that then I skipped it. other parts of the race too. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy busting around the house and checking in and I'm like, felt, I felt like there was a point where I missed something and I didn't. No, no. And then I came back again. Did I miss anything? Eh, nope. They're, they're still going. It's the. <laughs> It's the same thing. Yeah. Oh, that was a long one. That was a long one, buddy. That was a long one. Folds of Honor, Quick Trip 500, Atlanta Motor Speedway. Um, We were, I don't know, optimistic with the aero package and the rough track. And, I mean, I I will say the one thing is it was was fun to watch them slide. Yeah. But it just got old so fast. Um, Yeah. Kevin Harvick dominates, gets the win, 151 laps led. Um. You know, I found one thing that I found interesting is Harvick, I mean, as struggled as you can be by, you know, winning the race and dominating, but he struggled a little bit in the beginning. Harvick is known for the low line in Atlanta and in, in hooking that uh, bottom line, and he struggled to hit it this weekend, and I think it's because they moved the line, James. Yeah, that whatever the uh, the paint that yeah. they added to the, the they added to the track there, whatever, whatever it, it's at eight or ten inches or something like that. Um, yeah, I think it messed him up a little bit and he had to kind of adjust. Yep. He couldn't seem to Uh, find it, but once he, yeah, once he did, he (laughs) was locked in. Yeah. Um, Martin Church Jr. Had a good race too. Yeah. He, uh, did he, he won both stages. Won both stages. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He was a threat there for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it seemed to me, uh, we had a one groove race track going on. I know you can run the high side there, but you weren't running the high side to make up any ground. No, you know, you had to be on the bottom to, to do anything out there i think that's one of the the major disadvantages to this aero package too is that because because you're not lifting as much i mean they're lifting in atlanta don't get me wrong there's a lot of lifting in atlanta compared to the other tracks even with this low horsepower package but the lifting is more even because yeah. they're they don't have too much horsepower and so it's just the bottom line is going to be the fast line period yeah yeah and that's what you got here. And I'm trying to remember. I think we kind of saw that at Homestead last year, too. Didn't we? A track that's normally up high. It was down yeah. low a lot. That was down low. Yeah, definitely. It was down low a lot. And we're going to see it uh, later this week and see what it looks like again in a different time of the year, too. Yeah. Um, so there's and running it during the day. So Homestead is going to look completely different, I think. But we're it may look a lot like Atlanta where. Yeah, very well um, good. It, yeah, I don't know, but maybe the worn-out asphalt has something to do with that too, where you you get on that low line and you know maybe it's more stable. Uh, I I did see Kyle Busch said he was struggling, you know, kind of throttling the car all the way around the track. He could never quite get it to uh, to full throttle hmm. at, at times, is what he was saying. But he was, it wasn't a on the throttle, off the throttle thing. I think he was just kind of dealing with some handling. Um, but he he had a good day i mean he ended up second so yeah. it wasn't too bad for kyle atlanta is almost about about as close as you can get to the old langhorn as as you could possibly get i mean it's there's straightaways but they don't go straight very much in atlanta no. it's it's all turn yeah it is which i think you know that might be part of it too is it's hard to get a move on somebody and be able to get up underneath them and, and make the pass because you're always turning yeah um, yeah and you'd like to see guys try to get up high and get some runs and and we saw a little bit of it but it was only in in short spurts maybe after restarts and stuff where drivers would try to sit up high make a move uh come back down and, and you know we saw a couple of four wide moves you know early in runs but it never materialized after that yeah yeah the uh the truck race was i think the better race of the weekend um I'm trying to remember the xfinity race i think was okay the, race as well. was the dinger yeah. yeah yep that's right 
Um, Kyle Busch screwed himself over in the truck race and cost himself a win. Oh, he was furious on the radio again. <laughs> yeah. He is more angry on the truck radio than he is on the cup radio. Well, that's because he He's... expects to win every race. Well, sometimes it doesn't happen to you, bud. Right? <laughs> He wants that. He, I think he wants that. Whatever number he's going for now, he's already. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know he wants the 100 Xfinity wins, but man, he's he's. <laughs> yeah, I was reading his tweets, like people were tweeting stuff he was saying, and I was like, "Is this is this fake?" And then I did a little digging, and I'm like, "Oh no, he's really frustrated." So, <laughs> oh well, that's fine. Frustrated Kyle Busch is more entertaining for everybody. Yeah, I agree, 100. percent um, so yeah, Kevin Harvey gets the win. It's his second win in Atlanta after his first win at Atlanta. Um, one back in, in 2001 after Earnhardt was killed second cup race. And then, uh, he, uh, he had the drought, you know, ran well, dominated Atlanta, but, uh, never got the win until last year. And now he's got two in a row at Atlanta, um, salutes Dale senior with the, uh, the three out the window after the race. And, um, Polish victory lap, maybe a little salute to Alan Kowicki there as well. So that was kind of cool. Um, I thought the post race was pretty good. Yeah, he, he always has a good finish, even when he's burning it down or whatever he decides <laughs> to do. He's usually on top of it. He's got the he's got the pulse of the post race. Fifty uh, fifty one wins now. Yep. Um, for for Kevin, so he's broken past that fifty mark and moving on up. I think he's eleventh all time now. Something like that. Solo. Yeah. I think he's solo in eleventh now. He breaks the. Who did he break a tie with? I can't even remember. I don't have it in front of me. Shame on me for not doing that. I set myself up for failure right there. You know what? I have the stat pack in front of me. Let's see if it tells me. It does not. <laughs> Thanks a lot, NASCAR. <laughs> uh, it does say uh, that this is what? his 51st win in 692 Cup Series races. His second victory and ninth top 10 finish in 2020, which we are nine races in. So nice, all top 10s yeah. for him yeah. so far. He has broken a tie with Ned Jarrett and Junior Johnson at 50. Uh, next on the list, he's uh, putting his assault on Lee Petty at 54. <laughs> and then uh, Rusty Wallace at 55, Kyle Busch at 56. Nice. And then the next one on the list, Dale Earnhardt. Hmm. So, yeah, that's a, that's a company right there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Definitely puts uh, yeah. Harvick pretty high on that list of greatest drivers in, uh, in NASCAR. Yep. And it's he's interesting because I don't know that he's... I don't know that he's in that conversation for a lot of people, but the stats sure show that he should be. Yeah, but the races that he's won and the championship, yeah, he's won everything. Yep. He's done it all. Yep. So, yeah, he's, I mean, we. I feel like anytime Harvick wins, we can talk legacy, but he's got a couple years to go still, too, so I don't know where he's going to end up. Does he have all the majors, um, too? He's, he's got he's, all the majors. He's yeah. got the 500 in the Brickyard. Does he, does he have the 600? Uh, does he have the 600? Let's take a look. I think I want to say he does, but I can find out for you. I feel like he One does. One moment. Let's take a look at some of the tracks that Kevin Harvick has wins on. Here we go. I love digging through racing reference anyway. I yeah, I know. Less. That's, I, I sometimes like to turn you loose. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Uh, yeah, so he's got, so I'm just going through the list. So he's got the Brickyard. He's got Daytona 500. And I'm looking for Charlotte. Yep, he's got a 600. That's the, yeah, he's got the 600. Remember Dale Jr. ran out of gas. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's right. And he won that 600. Yep, so there it is. Kevin Harvick does have the 600. Uh, Let me see. Does he have a Bristol night race? He does. I was going to say, I was pretty sure he had a Bristol night race. He's won everywhere, man. He's got Sonoma. What tracks hasn't he won at? Uh, Let me run through the list of tracks he's got wins on. So Atlanta, Chicago, Indy. Hold on, let me put them in. I think I put them in order. Oh, no, I can't. That's okay. Atlanta, Chicago, Indy, Bristol, Phoenix, Watkins Glen, Richmond, Loudoun, Talladega, Michigan, Fontana, Martinsville, Charlotte, Kansas, Darlington, Homestead, Vegas. I bet you Kentucky. Kentucky doesn't have a win at, does he? He doesn't have Kentucky. No. No Kentucky. He's got both road courses. He doesn't have a Roval. Okay. Man, he's piled them up, though. He's got, yeah, we're we're looking at, he's got to be close, because Kyle Busch has a win on every track, right? Except, except the, Roval. the Roval. Yep. Yep, except the Roval. And he's um, the Jimmy only Johnson's, one. Johnson's, clo- Johnson's close. What yeah. hasn't Johnson won at? The Roval for Watkins, Jimmy. And there's Watkins one, Glen. Yeah, I was going to say there's Watkins one more. Glen. Yeah. So Harvick's got the list pretty close there, too. <laughs> but, yeah, man. It's Interesting. Got a, dang, win everywhere. <laughs> A lot yeah, of wins. I mean, he's racked him up with uh, 
He's racked him up with Stuart Haas. Over half of his wins now, easily over half of his career wins. I are with Stuart feel Haas. like he's an underrated driver, not in that he's, you know, that people don't expect him to win, but I just don't think he's in the conversation of, you know, goat status. And I mean, he's not, he's not Jimmy Johnson, but he's up there. I mean, yeah, he's, you certainly got to put him on a level with Kyle Busch, right? Yeah, he's he's approaching Tony Stewart range yeah. um, for me, uh, and yeah, and Kyle Busch is. I mean, Kyle Busch has passed him with the two championships, right? Um, and, and Kyle's got and all the lower wins. series champion or cha- wins too. But yeah, that's, Harvick's you know. got I mean, Harvick's got championships in the lower levels too yep. with uh, the Xfinity series nationwide or Bush or whatever you want to call it back then. So right. yeah, he's racked up a couple of titles too. Um, yeah, I mean, the active driver list, I think it's four guys, really. It's Johnson, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, and Kevin Harvick. And Kurt's not near where these guys are at. Matt Kenseth, maybe, I guess, because he's kind of he's kind of back. Yeah. Um, Kurt Busch has 31 career wins. I'm looking at the list. It's kind of interesting. Man, Martin Truex Jr. shot up that list, too. But, yeah, the active driver list is not – there's not many, in, you know, right now the three stand alone. It's Johnson, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick, so – Harvick's got to have won like three or four races a year most of his career, hasn't he? Yeah, it's looking that way. Let me see. His, we had some Richard Childress years where he was down. Um, his worst season was Stuart Haas's two. That was 2017 when they made that first year that first year switch to Ford. And he was right. still good that year, but just was an off year for him. Um, he backed that up with an eight-win season. Uh, 2012, he has one. And then 08 and 09, those were zeros. And 2004 was also a zero. So that's interesting. But yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's it. Two or, yeah, two wins a year, basically. Hmm. He's already got two this year. He's on his way. <laughs> right? Yeah. Nine top, nine top tens and ten starts. Oh, he's, I mean, he's a perennial championship contender now. I mean. Yeah. His last, so since 2013, and that was his last year with Richard Childers, he's riled off 20 plus top tens every season. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's just. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. He gets forgotten. You're right. I mean, I'm glad you brought that point. I didn't know we were going there on the pod today. Me neither. But I'm glad you brought that up. I like the legacy talk always. So if you're bored with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I don't care if they if, if they are, because we're going to have this talk. I, I love it, too. I like the, you know, I like where they rank in, in all time. You know, it's, it's we don't interesting. Get, we don't have, there's going to be a time here soon where Harvick's gone, Johnson's gone, and the only guys we can really talk legacy with are Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski for a little bit. And then, you know, it'll slide into that Joey Logano era. Right. Um, but, though, yeah, there's only a handful of these guys marching around out there still. So I still like that. I like those deep dives. Yeah, I think it's interesting that that we do have, you know, currently several drivers that are up at the top of, you know, those charts at, you know, at the high end of those numbers for wins and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to look at, though, that's interesting, because I said, OK, Harvick's a perennial championship contender. But let's look at 2017. Jimmy Johnson won three races at age 41. Yeah. And I remember they, they had special helmet painted up for the, you know, the where he was for tying with. I don't remember who it was that he was going to tie or beat. Might have been, was it Daryl? Yeah, remember. he's approaching. He's one behind Daryl and who was before Daryl? The one he was it? Oh, they're tied. Was oh, it Yarborough? Man. Yes, I believe you're right. So they painted up the special helmet, and he was going to wear it until he beat the beat the he record. Had, he's he's tied with Yarborough. And who was before Yarborough? Because was... Bobby. So the list right now is Richard Petty, David Pearson, Jeff Gordon, and then Bobby Allison and Daryl Waltrip at 84. Johnson and Yarborough at 83. Who's at who's below 83? Dale Earnhardt, 76. Okay. So I, I remember them. It must have been Yarborough then. They, they had the special helmet painted up for him, and he was going to wear it until he tied the record then. And then he, like, did it the next week or something like that. I remember that. Like, yeah. it was it was one of those things that Jimmy's, when's he going to stop winning? Well, that was 2017. He won three races, and he hasn't won since. Age 41. Kevin Harvick is age 44. He's won two so far, but you just that just goes to show you you never know. When that switch is going to yeah. flip and you're done. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> it right. it, it the, comes so abruptly at the end of these guys' careers a lot of times. Yeah. And Johnson even stumbling into that seventh championship, you know, that was not a dominating performance by any means. But no. the 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 greatness that it was that team with Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson got there. 
Um, they rose to the occasion when they when the opportunity presented itself. And since then, that season was not a great season for them. And that, ever since that that season, they've been down. Yeah. Um, but the resurgence this year, I think he, if he can get these two wins that he needs to be solo in fourth place, I don't think he gets caught until Kyle Busch eventually gets there. And then that'll probably be it for a long time. I can't imagine anybody else coming along other than Kyle Busch to uh, to take that top five spot. Right. And this was how great of a race Atlanta was. Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, that definitely tells you something for sure. Um, Anything else to talk about with Atlanta? I mean, William Byron finished 33rd. Yeah, he keeps having bad luck, man. He just that was a valve stem issue that they just knocked him right out of the race. Yep. Um, Eric Jones finished 28th. I mean, uh, bad luck for Eric. Yeah, Eric Jones, that four wide thing cut a tire down and yep. he was shot. Uh, he had a really nice day going before then. Um, I was surprised the Hendrick cars were not great. Like Chase was up there for a little bit, but he was never really a factor to win. Um, and, and Johnson was decent, but again, never really a factor to win. Chase started on the pole virtue of the draw. But right. um, once he lost it, he was done. I have a question for you. Yeah. Were we too high on Matt DiBenedetto at the beginning of the season? Ah, uh, this is a weird season, man. I know it's, I think... it's really hard to, to go with trends, but he's driving a basically a Penske car while the other Penske cars are running well. And he's finishing kind of where he was finishing before. Yeah. And, but a lot of it's been look. self-inflicted. Yeah. I mean, his average finish is still compared to last year. He's still up almost three spots. So that's mm-hmm. a nice improvement. Um, based I mean, the, on the last tracks year. where he's been expected to impress, like Bristol, for example, he's had yeah, trouble. Yeah, he was out to lunch at Bristol. Yeah. Uh, he ran well at Darlington, second Darlington, mm-hmm. and he ran. He was second place at Las Vegas. I mean, that seems like yeah. a year ago. I know, right? Um, so uh, I'd like to see him get back. I mean, I think he'll be. I think he'll be good at Talladega coming up, and I think he'll be good at Martinsville. So we'll see. I. It's early. That's a new team, and they've got a big wrench thrown in their plans just right. yet. So they've got the least continuity to, to go. But that team, that team's running better than they were probably with Menard. I would say they're probably happier with some of those these results. So, right. Um, yeah, he should be better. He should be better. I feel like he should be creeping into the top ten. But I, let's go. Let's give him. I'd say let's give him until halfway through the through the season and see where he's at before we. But yeah, I think we were I think we were expecting way too much from him. I think we thought he'd come out and win maybe a race or two. I don't know if winning is going to happen for him right now. Yeah. yeah, I think I mean we both I think expected him to win this season. And yeah. I think both of us weren't wouldn't have been surprised to see him win early. Well, how we and thought we were he was going to win last year. We had that that's discussion true. last year that too. That's true. Yeah, and he almost did it. And well, I, mean, I think you thought he was going to win last year. I think I said no. Yeah, well, we had that discussion regardless, yes, yeah. but you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. I wish I was right more often. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah, can't win them all. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so one other thing to talk about with Atlanta, and this could be a real quick topic. This could be a very long topic. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know this was happening beforehand. Like I said, I, I skipped through the pre-race, and when I saw them parked on pit road, I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I skipped back to see what was going on. And so NASCAR took some time during the pre-race to show its support for the um, the fight against racism and social injustice and, and all of that. Um, they played a nice clip that was from the Sounds of Things put together by Jimmy Johnson um, of a bunch of drivers speaking on the issue. Um, of course, Bubba Wallace was a, a center point in a lot of that. Um, we They pulled the cars down on the front stretch, parked them, uh, NASCAR president Steve Phelps had a little bit of a speech over the radio about it. Um, I thought it was a great, great thing. I think it was absolutely awesome um, to see, you know, to see a sport that has been, you know, criticized so much for being a redneck sport, for not being, um, you know, accepting of, of race and, and all that. Um, and this, even in the light of, you know, I hate to bring Kyle Larson back into this stuff, but you know, with what happened with Kyle Larson during the, the yep. pandemic, you know, that, that set us back a little bit and it's nice to see NASCAR 
just coming right out and saying, this is our stance on this issue. And we're seeing this from yeah. other sports too. Yep. Um, you know, it's, but it's been, it's been really good to see. Um, I see that, you know, one of the NASCAR officials, a black NASCAR official knelt during the anthem on, uh, on Sunday, you know, if that would have happened back when Kaepernick did it, everybody would have gone crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Instead, NASCAR tweeted it and the loud, the loud majority has flipped yeah. completely on that, uh, on that stance in the last two weeks. So I just, you know, I think it's, I think it's great. We still have a long, long ways to go. Um, but I mean, come on, guys! Do. If you're not we on, do, man. if you're not on board with this fight against racism, you're on the wrong team right now. I'm sorry. And I want to make something clear here too. This discussion is not a political discussion, and if you think it is, right, there's the door, man. Right. I mean, this is not a political thing. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't care what people think. I'm not. We're not. We're not here to talk about politics. That that's not what we're here. We're here for right. Um, but this is a big moment. I I tweeted that I felt like this was was the biggest moment. NASCAR's had quite some time. Yeah, I agree that they took they took a stance on something, and whether you feel like it's right, wrong, or indi- you're indifferent, doesn't matter. NASCAR took a stand, and now we're seeing the drivers saying we don't want Confederate flags, and Bubba mm-hmm. Wallace leading that charge, and NASCAR is saying, you know, I think, I think Eric, I think next week we're going to see that. That yeah, I think if we had come fans back, at the track right now that we would have that announcement already. But because we yes. don't have fans at the track, we don't need to worry about it. Yes. But, OK, here's here's my stance on the Confederate flag. And I, I can't remember what my discussion was on it last year, a couple years ago when it when it came up. Um, but my stance on it at this point is I don't care if it offends NASCAR fans to ban that flag at the track. Ban it. If if that if that is going to keep somebody from coming to a race then I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't care if you're there. Fly your Confederate <laughs> flag at home. Right. I don't think there's a place or... for it there, to be quite uh, honest. Right. No, I, <laughs> I agree with you there. No, you know what? I may, I may have misspoken. <laughs> but now, I'm not, like, I'm not as crazy you... as go back and, you know, remove it from the car in Dukes of Hazard and the old shows and whatnot. Sure, we don't need yeah. to change history. But at right. this point forward, there is no place for that flag in our nation. No, just like there's no place for the KKK to mm-hmm. show up wearing their hoods, right? Yep. That's not acceptable. People people have that stuff, and that's a historical thing, but we don't do that anymore. This is this. I mean, this that flag means something to people, and it's hurtful. Yeah. And the same way I feel about the Washington Redskins football team. Yeah. That logo hurts people, and they are still defiantly trotting out that logo all the time. And this is not like, and Eric, a couple of years ago, heck man, months ago, I would have probably told you a lot of stuff that is going on in this country is over PC, right? Right. It's just PC culture where, you know, blah, 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 taking away our rights, blah, blah, blah. Um, not anymore, man. Mm-hmm. We just got to have empathy for each other yep. a little bit. And it's not just about this, this world. And if this pandemic has taught us anything, this world ain't just about us, man. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there. You know, we got to take care of each other. We got to take care of your family. You got to take care of your your peers. Um, And, you know, there's people you probably don't understand. But, man, this is not just about you. And that's the way that that's the way I feel about the Confederate flag. Don't don't offend somebody because of your selfish pride. Exactly. Fly, fly your fly your race car drivers colors instead. Yeah. Fly. God, fly the American flag. Yeah, I don't care. But come on, man. Yeah, I, I yeah. really, really hope that before we go to Talladega, we have that announcement because uh, and not to not to, you know, pick on the south. But, you know, that's where we see it more. You know, it's it and it means something oh, in the different, heart of Atlanta, to, you know, you know, and, and I know. Let me put it this way, too. Yeah, exactly. Let yeah, me put it. This, let me put it this way, too. I don't think because you enjoy the Confederate flag or you fly the Confederate flag that you're a racist either. I no. understand that that flag does not mean that to these to people or south, you know, exactly. But yeah. just because it doesn't mean that to you doesn't mean it doesn't mean it to other people. Yes. You know, I mean, if I mean, there's a lot of symbols that I could think were cool, but they aren't because, yep. you know, ain't nobody, ain't nobody throwing swastikas around out there anymore. <laughs> exactly. Unless you're, unless you're trying to be hateful. Right. 
And, you know, I know the Confederate flag to some people isn't hateful. Mm -hmm. I know I understand that. But to many, many people, half this country or so, it is. Right. It is hateful. And I mean, quite the opposite. To a lot of people, it's it's the opposite of hateful. It's, sure. You know, we're... Your country, there's, right? There's nothing South. wrong with being proud of being a redneck, you know? But you just you need to be inclusive of everybody. That's the, that's the heritage of our sport is Southern roots. Yep. And and that culture i i get that but that's as as great as that is um for us it's also brought some pretty dark stuff with yep. it and that's what that's what nascar that's why nascar made their stance that they did yep. um just to be inclusive for for people and you know we're 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 you know eric man i i when Kaepernick did his stuff and I'm still not a big Kaepernick fan because I think he's got other agendas mm -hmm. personally. That's my personal beliefs. Cause he was the one wearing the Fidel Castro shirt and doing that. He was doing a bunch of different stunts back then. Right. Um, but you know what? Anybody who wants to make what he was doing about the flag, I was wrong. Cause I thought that's what he was doing too. And it's definitely not about that. And it took, it took, uh, whatever's going on in 2020, for me to kind of be like, okay, I, I was probably wrong back then to, to really think what he was doing. And I, I'll never kneel for the flag. I will always stand right. for the flag, my hand in my heart. And that's what I'm going to do. And again, that's, that's me. Then that's probably you, right? That's yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, I actually do kneel for the flag frequently, but that's because I take photos. And so I get <laughs> down on my knee to take the photos and I always yeah. feel weird doing it, but <laughs> probably somebody looking at you thinking, yeah and that guy look at that guy. i make sure when i'm not shooting the photo that i'm not crouched down anymore that i am saluting the flag or whatever hand over yeah. my heart like you're supposed to yeah exactly and that's that's the respect that my family brought me up in um yeah. but i i can see now that there's you know we we don't live that life that's not the that's not the life we grew up with just right. like they they didn't grow up the way we did Yep. Kaepernick and and you know that official who was kneeling and and heck man Bubba Wallace, um, what a week he's had. I have he's to give experience in us such a pat know? on the back to Bubba Wallace for for you Hell know yeah man again Hell you, you know that. we we talked about Dale Jr. Donald last week I got a chance to listen to it since we recorded last week um, did a great job of explaining things on there and and how you know he decided that he needed to take a stand on this he needed to be the spokesperson and he's. He's taking it on his shoulders, man. And, and, you know, it's maybe it's not fair for him to have to do that. But the fact that he's willing to and and I think it's his place. You know, if you're if you're a minority driver and you're trying to help this, you this know, is his moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can either. I don't want to take shots at, at Kyle Larson here. Kyle Larson also comes from the Drive for Diversity program. So this is this is just the comparisons that we can generally make right Bubba Wallace from day one <clears throat> on all this stuff from the Larson incident all the way through has taken a role of leadership. He let, he reached out to Kyle Larson. He's reaching out to the NASCAR community. Yep. He's taking a firm stand. Uh, meanwhile, Kyle Larson has deleted all of his social media accounts and has disappeared and is just doing his thing, yeah. which is his prerogative. He can do that. But also, it's just the polar opposites that you're looking at there of one guy who Eric, you and I have been Bubba fans. We watched him win in Eldora. You know, mm -hmm. we think he's got great talent, but this what he's doing now is beyond what his talent is. Oh, yeah. He's this is driver, he is making even more of a legacy in this sport. He is, I think, solidifying himself a spot in the Hall of Fame someday, um, potentially. I mean, he's he has. He's never shied away from this. No, his whole, his whole career. He's helping to change our sport, and that's awesome. You know, he's bringing in, he's putting an arm around people who may not feel included in NASCAR, right? And is saying, "Come with me." Well, and look, and, I'm seeing all over social media from people that, you know, didn't know that there was a black driver that didn't know Bubba Wallace was there, and now are watching NASCAR because of Bubba Wallace. How awesome well, is that? Yeah, and you know what? I was going to add that. I'm glad you said that because. As much as we were excited for eyeballs to be on the sport when we were the first to come back, right? Right. I've heard more discussions about NASCAR from other media sources this week than I did even at the start of 
returning from COVID mm -hmm. because of Bubba Wallace's message and he's handling it so well. Yep. And he has, we've got guys who are following his lead, like Jimmy Johnson, yeah. Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski. They're all champions in the sport. And you've got this guy, this, you know, still young buck who's only a couple of years into his cup series career. And again, he's showing them the way yep. that Jimmy Johnson, who is the biggest voice when he speaks, we need to listen. And now you see Jimmy Johnson taking positive steps, but it was Bubba first. And now we've got, he's got the, he's got the driving core around him. Yep. And it, it's great to see. That's a, that's a brotherhood that many people will never understand. It's a, it's a small group of 40 guys mm -hmm. and they have to stand with each other in, you know, it could be, it could be this issue on race. It could be something else, but they are together. Right. And that's, that's great to see for our sport and the leadership of our sport. Yeah. Um, anything else on that? I think that was really good. good. I thought we did so good there. Don't you? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we didn't, I, felt like I just got off the therapy couch. Yeah, we didn't, I mean, we didn't say anything that's going to get us in trouble. So that's good. Um, uh, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. There's still, there's still time. <laughs> TBD. TBD. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but no, I, I, you know, I applaud NASCAR for again, being on the, on the front end of something. I mean, they were pretty early to the support uh, on this movement um, and no, no hesitation whatsoever. It was jump in, you know, both feet in. Um, I saw today that they joined a group and I don't want to butcher the group, but um, it was a group for inclusion for LGBT and all that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, that was cool to see something you'd never see from NASCAR a year ago. I mean, even, Probably, yeah, probably within the last couple of years, I would, yeah, I would say that's, you know, and, and I know there's fans out there, Eric, that are really mad. Oh, yeah, I guarantee it. But I don't mad. care. You know? I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just yeah. don't care at this point. You know, you can be pissed off all you want about the arrow package, about, yeah. you know, the personalities in the sport. You can be mad about all that stuff. But to be mad because we're being inclusive is freaking ridiculous. Just that we're showing empathy for other people. Exactly. I, I just, I mean, I feel like I have some old school roots. And, you know, the younger version of me has very had a very different view on this world than this <laughs> version of me that's been beaten and battered. Right. <laughs> you know, um, but listen, if, for the older fans out there who aren't coming back because of all this stuff. I'm sorry. You guys had your time and mm -hmm. look where it's been led to not blaming older generations for everything. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> Look at the upheaval that we're in now. Yeah. This is a chance for us to turn the script on the, some of this stuff. Yep. And that's, that's where I stand on that. Um, we will have a black lives matter car at Martinsville. Uh, Bubba Wallace driving the black lives matter car. Um, awesome. Absolutely cool. Really cool to say today to see, the different media members and, and whatnot sharing it out and talking about being excited about the fact that we're doing this. Yeah. I mean, it just, it feels like a different NASCAR James. I just, yeah, we're, you know, I've, I've been really conflicted because I am, you know, I'm more of a liberal person. I don't call myself a liberal. My friends call me liber a liberal, but I definitely no. am more liberal minded. And the fact that our sport is very conservative has always been a conflict for me. Because yeah. when we get into political stuff, and again, we're not, this isn't a political issue in the, at this no. point, but no. when we get into that stuff, a lot of times I'm very conflicted because I want to defend my sport that I love. I mean, this is, this is my sport. I love a lot of sports. I love a lot of things, but NASCAR and auto racing, that's, one, right? that's it. That is my big thing. That is what I've grown up with. And to be able to, to be able to be proud of the, the stances that are being taken, you know, in in yeah. the world right now it's 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 i love it yeah absolutely and, and you know just the opposite of you i come i i, I still believe i have some conservative values mm -hmm. you know and not and but if i can come from a conservative type of background and say you know what we're doing some good things here i mean why can't why can't everybody else <laughs> but i'm not an extremist either i kind of float the line right <laughs> you know but um I don't know. I, I, feel I think like both it's not you and I are, are alike. And I think that's why we get along despite having a little bit different views is that both of us are very willing to look at both sides of the issue. We're not, we're not pigeonholed into a certain I, category. We don't I fit a mold. A background too. 
you have to hear both sides, right? That's yeah. you know, you know, you don't get the whole story unless you hear both sides. Yep. Um, okay. If you if you do want to be pissed off at something about NASCAR, though, James, you know where they what they can be pissed off about. Yeah, is, let's go. Yeah, let's talk about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm pissed. <laughs> so Jeff Gluck tweets today. Um, John. Bobo, Bobo, I don't know how you say his name. Who the heck is he? I'm assuming he's somebody. I don't know. I don't even know his title. Honest with you, he's somebody with within NASCAR. Um, so let me let me sort of let me read this response that. that Jeff tweeted out. Um, I'm assuming it's from a press conference today or whatnot. But anyway, uh, question was: After the first NASCAR races, how many positive coronavirus test cases did NASCAR medical encounter? And John Bobo responds. <laughs> Thanks for that question. A lot of that information is confidential, whether we have or we haven't. We get that information from people that we work with. We will take all the responsible steps to make sure that we have advised the people that indi- that that individual may have been in contact with of what's needed. I think what's unique about every COVID positive, each presents its own set of unique facts. What our policy is, when those things start to come in, we will work with people and our medical experts to see exactly who needs to be notified what we need to do responsibly and work with any local officials. If we need to a didn't answer the question. That's the old NASCAR. We like right there. B the answer sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> it's the worst. It's so, the worst. so I know James is a big fan of the PTM racing podcast. Um, but they tweeted out today in response to this, this is hot trash NASCAR. You did extremely well trash. with the social injustice stuff and you flub this like a greased watermelon. That's um, well said. I couldn't have said it better myself. Another another very uh, well-known Twitter personality, Mr. James Cush, tweets out, I think we should know if there are positive tests, especially if they are going to start allowing fans back at the track. And there you go, man. I mean, yeah. come on. I don't care who the names are. Just tell me that. Just tell me the numbers. Yeah. Tell me the numbers. Because it's important. We're, we're doing this in our states, Eric, where – if you live in where we live, like I live in Saginaw County, you live in Bay County. We need to know these numbers, you know, that are coming through. I don't care how many people are tested. Just tell me, just tell me if you've got positives. Yep. That's all we need to know. Yep. Hey, I'm looking yeah. at going back to the track as a media member, hopefully in August, if they allow me back, but I'd like to yeah. know this number if I'm going to be doing that. Yeah. If you had, so a, a, a one person positive test is a lot different than a 12 person Right. You know, Kate's and that changes things for everybody. And if, and this week we'll talk about it probably in a second, but fans are coming back. Yep. Small amount of fans, but they're coming back and you can't, I don't know. You can't boast. You and I were texting about this stuff. Sorry if it's repetitive, Eric, No. but you can't, you can't boast about we're the first ones back. Let us show you the way we're going to have fans back first. We're doing all this stuff. Rah, rah, rah. And then have a response like that. Yeah. That it's just garbage. Just absolute garbage. Yeah. I hope that, you that tell people. You I hope they're to. taking a task on it. Um, unfortunately, none of the media members are at the track unless they're Jim Utter um, or yeah. Jenna Fryer. So yeah, we need Bob. Yeah. Right now. We could use Bob yeah. Apocris at the track. We could use Gluck at the track. We could use Bianchi at the track. I reached out to, you know, what's funny too, is I reached out to Bob last night. I actually tweeted at him and he didn't respond. Usually sometimes he does. Right. I'd say six, of the time he, he responds, but I asked him that question. Have you heard of any positive tests? And I was hoping to hear back from him and, and thank, thank you for Jeff Gluck to get this, you know, shared. Cause I wouldn't have seen it. Right. Uh, and that's just not what I was hoping for. I, I've been very proud to say that NASCAR hasn't had any positive tests yet, but what do we know now? Right, exactly. I can't, I can't stick my chest out and be like, Hey, look at NASCAR. Look what they're doing. They are racing, you know, seven times a week, right. <laughs> it seems like. And we have no positive tests. And look how many people they bring to the track. And isn't that great? Isn't that great news? This ruins it for me. Yeah. Because who the hell knows what we're, what we're doing. I agree. Can we also talk about the fact that two of the, what, three media members, four media members that are allowed at the track right now are two of the most hated media members in NASCAR? Oh. In Jenna Fryer and, and Jim Otter, which I don't, I don't agree with the Jenna Fryer thing, but. I'm, she doesn't I won't comment, bother me. I won't comment she, on Jim Utter. Yeah, Jenna doesn't bother me as much. And Jim, Jim's got issues. He knows. <laughs> he's, he's, had his, he's had his run-ins. Yeah, I mean, he had the, like, I let's rotate the let's one. rotate the media members for God's sakes. I don't expect to get a chance, but I mean, let's rotate them around. Let yeah, let Parker's in there. Yeah, 
We need Bob. For God's Bob. sake, how is Pockers not on the list? Yeah, Fox is airing these races. And he Garbage. works for him. Garbage. I know, it's bad. It's not nice. <laughs> it's not uh, good. We should have bitched about that two weeks ago, but we were so excited about racing being back. I know. I know. Well, and the photographer thing sucks, too. I saw you yeah. tweet about that, and I saw, I agree. Yeah, well, we talked about that a little bit last week. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, <sighs> I agree with you there, man. Yeah. We should have a couple. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't have people. I pff, throw my hands up. I don't know. Um, all right, let's talk about fans. We got fans coming back to the track, James. Um, what what do we what do they say? A thousand, uh, a thousand military members at Homestead, uh, and then five thousand fans at Talladega. Yep, five thousand fans that are going to get to battle it out on a first come first serve basis. Um, I think we should do like something where they have to chug a certain number of um, Budweisers or I don't know. There's got to be some some redneck game we can play <laughs> to get them. You know, as maybe the maybe if they could survive the. You know, We're what's good. Talladega going to be without the without the boulevard, man? I know. It's going to be weird. <laughs> what's Clay weird. Moyer going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I know. No kidding. God. Yeah. No, it's going to be know, weird. You know, I bet you Clint Boyer comes out and wins Talladega because he'll be the first Talladega race he's not hung over for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's good there, too, man. So he's got a shot. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Talladega's going to be weird with no fans. I mean, that place is is probably the number one rowdy Right. spot right so, well they'll have fans they'll have five thousand of them yeah it's yeah, not the just, infield <laughs> i mean maybe maybe that's what you do is you bring in the in, bring the infield just tell them ready to stay apart <laughs> right you can't do it can't be done yeah you got to keep the route out Man. um yeah, yeah I I mean, know, it's I, gonna be i'm happy we're getting some fans back in the stands but i don't know i mean until we can get until we can fill the stands back up i guess i don't care yeah i mean they're gonna be safe yeah. It's going to be little pockets of people. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I think it's good I at this point. Have, if 5,000 is the number, we could have 5,000 everywhere. Yeah. I don't see why Talladega has to be the only one. Really. You yeah. could have 5,000 people at Martinsville and it'd be fine. Yeah, exactly. This place is huge. Yeah, I mean, you could spread people out around the track and call it good. Um, speaking of the fan thing, that's something we missed last week, James. Um, I think it was talked about right after we recorded is uh, the Eldora truck race is in jeopardy. That's not surprising. Yeah, um, we did talk about that. Yeah. Basic, basically, they need fans to run it. So um, without fans, we won't be running it. Yeah, so. I'm okay with that, which sucks, but I understand it too. Yeah, it's, this year is just a throwaway year. I, I mean, think the teams would, probably wouldn't even mind that. I think that, that race is probably taxing on those teams. Oh, I'm sure. To a certain extent. So if they're... You know, I just worry that, about it going away and not coming back. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I hope not. I love that. That's one of the, I mean, we know that's one of the races we look forward to yep. every year. Except so. they did run it last year, but. They try. They, they try. <laughs> try. Um, back to Bubba Wallace. We found out today that he's expected to be back at Richard Petty Motorsports next year. Um, I think that's both a good and a bad thing because I'd like to see Bubba in a better team, but it'll be nice that yeah. Bubba's still back, still in NASCAR, well, still in the Cup Series. Let's see, I mean, maybe he's going to be a wanted free agent. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Maybe hey, RP, RP, you know, I think RPM they they put this on they put this announcement out because I think they're trying to get it done now. You're right. How about, can see how about stick Bubba Wallace in the 48 car? Yeah, I mean that wouldn't be a bad idea. That'd be fun. He's shown if he's in top level equipment, he can win in the yeah. lower series. He's yeah. done it. Yep, done it multiple times. Yep. No Xfinity win though. He was talking about talking to Dale Jr. that that's one of his regrets is he doesn't have an Xfinity win and. Junior said, "Well, I think Mike Davis said we got we got we know a, a team." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would yeah, love to see Bubba run a Junior Motorsports car in the Xfinity she series. Had a raw deal in the Xfinity series, though. If yeah, people well, remember, yeah. it didn't it didn't plan pan out that well for him with Roush. Yeah. He just ran out of they ran out of funding for him. Yeah, which really sucked. Yeah, um, but he made out okay. He's doing fine. Um, probably the biggest news of the week, James. I I don't. I'm assuming you saw this before I we did. this. Uh, Tony Stewart will not be running the Xfinity race at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course. Um, Tony Stewart is it's getting good at broken promises. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's picking them up and knocking them down on me lately. I'm not happy. Too difficult to field the extra team for the race and also the fact that they were going to do it for the fans and there won't be fans there. So what's the point? So, Sucks. yep, I'm bummed too. It would have been cool to see Smoke. 
We were so excited on this podcast that he was coming back. Well, I was, one of us was really excited. I was I was happy, but somebody was. Remember little... when he said he was going to run the Indy 500 again? Yeah, I got really excited about that. That <laughs> that died off. So, yeah. oh well, whatever. Um, <laughs> any other news worth talking about? I've got one for you that um, you can go with the preview that we're going to do here in a minute on Martinsville. Um, Jim Utter, I think it was Jim Utter, announces, yeah, it was Utter, um, that if the cup race for some reason has rained out tomorrow night, it will not be run on Thursday um, because there's not enough time to turn it around and get to Homestead. Uh, there's a couple dates that they're looking at, and I lost the tweet, so I don't remember what those dates are. But uh, That's good to know. Yeah, so if it rains out, they aren't running the next day, so. Yeah, and um, one more thing to add to, just a quick note, is the Hall of Fame voting for 2021 was today, okay. but we will not have an announcement for another week. There you go. Yep. Uh, with that, we get to preview two races this week, James. You and I both kind of forgot last week that we had Martinsville <laughs> on Wednesday yeah, we night, yeah. so we kind of we had to do the podcast, we probably would have aimed for Wednesday or Thursday, but uh, had to do it tonight, so um, you guys are getting a couple days early, or a day early at least, uh, for this because of that. Um, on Friday of this week, so this week's real early. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So let's uh, let's look at Mar- look at uh, Atlanta first. Um, I picked Kevin Harvick as my race winner, and James picked Chase Elliott. We all know Kevin Harvick won, so I got two points on that one. And then uh, James beat me by one spot on the dark horse. Bubba Wallace finished one spot ahead of Chris Buescher, so James gets a point there. I am leading twelve to ten after nine races. So nice and close. It is, but yeah, it's ridiculously close. It, it, there, you got me there by four points for a little while, but it's it's been pretty much close the entire season. Yep. Which is there we go. Uh, okay, so we go to Martinsville tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Um, and James gets the first pick. So who are you picking for Martinsville, James? Oh boy. Listen, I feel like it should be easier for me than it is. Yeah. Um. I'm going to take, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit lower than I would initially thought. I'm going to take Joey Logano here. Okay. it's a good pick. Yeah, I like Brad Keselowski's success with Paul Wolf, and I like Joey Logano's success as just Joey Logano. So I'll take uh, the, that combination. This is tough because I know who I want to pick, but I don't know that I want to risk losing the points. I'm going to do it anyway. So, because it's going to, I know who you're going to take, say it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Jimmy. Oh, I didn't think you were going to say Jimmy. I thought you were going to say Clint Boyer. No, I'm taking Jimmy. He's, he's got a great average finish here. He's got nine wins at Martinsville. You know, I mean, okay. I like it. I'm going Jimmy. He's been running well. He's in the Chevy. Jimmy Johnson, not Kimmy Johnson. As I just typed in the notes. (laughs) And I get the dark horse pick first for Martinsville. And I'm going to pick better than last week. Um, who was jumping out at me? I'm going to go. I'm going to go for the heck of it. And I, I'm going to base this off of absolutely nothing. And I'm going to go with uh, shoot. I can't even think of his dang name. Uh Oh, um, Christopher Carter Bell. Bird. I'm going Christopher Bell. To Christopher Bell. Okay. I'm also going to go off the board. Okay. Um, since you took mine, I wanted Chris. Okay. <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> I did. I did. I wanted Chris Bell. Um, but I'll take Tyler Reddick. So we'll both take rookies. Okay. Uh, Reddick has no experience here either, but um, I'll take him. That's a good pick. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that, after Martinsville, we go to Homestead next weekend. We got lots of races at Homestead. We got two Xfinity races, a truck race, and a cup race. Um, so for the cup race, I get the first pick at Homestead and I am going to go, um, Hmm. Oh, I got to look at the right, probably help if I look at the right, uh, right averages here to make my pick for Homestead. Um, I know who I want to go with. I just want to see. I think this is going to be a little bit of a wild card for us, Eric. Yeah, I think so too. Right. We, we, you know, no championship on the line. I don't know what we're going to see. It's going to be different. It will be different. I know who my dark horse is going to be. Um, but the, the main pick. 
I'm going to I'm going to go with my gut and I'm going to go Brad Keselowski for absolutely no reason. Yeah, that's a good pick. <clears throat> He'll be good there. Who you got? Um I really love man, I got to beat Brad Keselowski. Um <laughs> I really like what I saw out of Atlanta from Martin Truex Jr. So I will take Martin Truex. Uh, to be at Homestead. He has been really good here, but he's also always been running for a championship. So right. uh, no Cole Pern, so I feel like I'm risking it just a tick. Uh, I don't know what Martin Truex Jr. is without Cole Pern, but he was pretty good in Atlanta. So Yeah, this one's a really interesting one. I think Kevin yeah. Harvick's a really good pick, too. Kyle Busch, I think, will be good. Logano's yeah. going to be good. It's, it's um, just Pen- interesting because we've never seen this group of drivers running this track where it wasn't for a title. For a title, yeah, it's gonna be so. Weird. How Mac- many guys have held back because they weren't running for the title? Sure, yeah. Kyle Larson was one at yeah. one point. Oh yeah, remember? Yeah. Um, Matt Kenseth, I, he doesn't qualify as a dark horse. I won't. We, no. I don't think we can qualify him. But he's running the forty-two. That car's had a lot of success at that track, and he's good there. So maybe right. Matt Kenseth have a good run. But that is the one thing for certain, though, that that Kyle Larson will not win at Homestead. Probably not, but he, who knows? <laughs> I guess they could squeeze him in in an injury real late, but who knows? Um, we should mention uh, Ooh, for Mark you know, for, fan, for, for fantasy purposes, though, Austin Dillon and his his wife is expecting this week. Yes. Oh, yeah. That and was he, in the notes. I skipped over it. No, that's OK. I, I just wanted to, for people who are thinking about that. Um, he's going to be uh, hey, he's got a super sub. And who is it? Oh, my gosh. Now I brought it up again and I'm drawing a blank again. It's uh, AJ Allmendinger. Thank you very much. It's the dinger. Yes. Jeez. So, so wow. somebody tweeted out Noah Sweet. Uh, Noah Sweet 7 on Twitter just tweeted out a paint scheme for NASCAR Pride for Jimmy Johnson in the Ally oh, I've car. Seen that. Oh, Good. my God. I'm retweeting it right now, guys. T Super Speedway on Twitter. Um, it Forget is about what sweet. it stands for. It looks good regardless. It is a sweet looking car. That's way better than the Ally car looks. The Ally car is a pretty bad paint scheme. I will say somebody pointed out that this year it's uh, matte colored, matte black. It is nice, yeah. And it's bad, it's better. Matt's better. Yeah, the matte is better. So it's okay. still bad scheme. Um, Dark Horse James for Homestead. Crap. Man, oh man, I don't even know what to do here. Um. Yeah, Matt to Benedetto. We can't pick him. Nope. Although he might be making his way back into it. Yeah, you could probably pick Matt here. Um, I'll go with. I, I want to say Tyler Reddick again, but I won't. I won't. Uh, I will say Bubba Wallace. Okay. Um, he worked out well for me. He seems to be top 15ing people to death. So I like that he's probably going to be somewhere up there. That's a good pick. And I really like the fact you didn't go with Tyler Reddick because that's my pick. Because. Yeah. Tyler He's Reddick be, is good at Homestead in the Xfinity series, and Tyler yeah, Reddick yeah. likes to run the wall. So I feel like I should have picked it. I, should, <laughs> I yeah. screwed up. I think I should have flip flopped my dark horses. Yeah, if if you got a, if you have a track where the groove is an inch off the wall, pick Tyler Reddick. Yeah, I should have doubled up on Tyler Reddick or flip flopped because Bubba is pretty good at Martinsville. Yeah, he has. is. He's on there in the trucks. Uh, yeah, I have really screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I'll get some more points on you. That's fine. Yeah, I think you're going to get some points on that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm conceding already. We'll see. Um, Fantasy League, I don't even want to talk about. I'll leave that to you because I forgot to pick my drivers and finished dead last. Yeah, it wasn't great. We all were bunched up, uh, and I didn't get any of the bonus points, when I think, which left me. I had a good team, but no bonus points. Um, and I am pulling it up right now. Here we go. So the winner of Atlanta was Denny the Many, okay. and then uh, Freight Train came in one point off the win, our good buddy Todd there. Uh, Justin 713 at 205, and then we were tied, uh, me and Ranger at four, at uh, position number four, I guess we tied for position four for, at 198, and then Baron Speedway, Jay Wint, all at 195, and then Toyota Fan, 60, and Eric, I won't say how many points you had. Yeah, it was really bad. Uh, overall right now it is freight train by a margin about 30 points ahead of ranger and denny the many is not is about 100 points back so uh todd's opening it up a little bit that son of a gun (laughs) 
um, I'm in fourth, Justin713, Baron Speedway, The KB Show, Toyota Fan, and Jay Wint making ground because he's been doing really well with the picks he's had. So, yeah, there you, you, go. you called Todd our good buddy, and I don't know if I want to be lumped into, he's, into um, our he, on that one. I don't he made me laugh today. Um, <laughs> so he does that. He'll either make me laugh or he'll make me shake my head <laughs> sometimes. And today he made me laugh, which yeah. I appreciate. Yeah, we, like, good. we like Todd. Todd's a good dude. He is. He is. Mr. Stat Guy. That's the problem. That's why he's so good at this stuff is he's into the stats, man. He is not fooling around. I no. I like it. I like it. I, you know, I was talking trash during the during the uh, pandemic break, and uh, boy, am I paying for it. <laughs> um, James, you got any shout-outs this week? Oh, man. I had one. There is a guy, and I don't have his name, and shame on me. This is number three for me okay. that I've screwed up this week. Um, there's a guy on Instagram, and he does paint schemes for cup teams. Okay. Like, professionally, that's what he does. And I want to find his name. And I just followed him, and, of course, I'm not going to be able to find him. Yeah, that's usually what happens. That's why I'm trying to scroll through because there's I'm one. I'm my keister sometimes. Um, but this guy does paint schemes, and sometimes he does fantasy schemes, and they're fantastic. I probably find and if too. I don't find it within the next five seconds, I will make sure to mention it next week on the podcast because I think it's so cool. He did uh, what he did today was he had a he had a scheme from it was a rejected scheme from when Elliot Sadler drove the 19. OK, and he put it on. It's a McDonald's car and he put it on a Chevy Camaro body and updated it. And it was slick, dude. That's cool. I love some of these fantasy schemes, but of course I just followed him. I followed him specifically for this purpose today and dang it, Instagram. All right. Well, while you're looking for it, I'm going to throw out a couple of them here real quick. Um, So the first one is a guy called the iceberg on YouTube. Um, He might be on social media as well, but I have found that I love a lot of his videos that he posts kind of documentary type stuff. Um, and today's that got me hooked on it and made me want to want to suggest it is, um, the, his video he posted yesterday was, it's called the worst weekend of Jeff Gordon's career. Um, it talks about his, one of his races in Chicagoland where he finished terrible, um, just had an all around bad day. There's a lot of good stuff like this on his channel. There's, I mean, he posts like every day, so there's all kinds of stuff. Um, the most underrated season in NASCAR history was one that he posted a month ago. Um, there's uh, 10 races to watch in quarantine two months ago. He posted, uh, just good stuff. So, um, definitely worth, uh, giving him a follow. There's some really good NASCAR YouTube channels. Um, that's one of the, one of the good ones for me. And then the other one I wanted to shout out, I've shouted out, shouted him out before, but he's got a new, the Instagram account's under a new name now. It's the same account. Uh, but SC underscore diecast underscore dude. He is the one who has the scale model, the 164 scale model of Daytona International Speedway. Um, and he's been doing, I mean, he works on it constantly. He updates his Instagram like crazy. Um, but he's doing a YouTube series coming up of making Daytona and how he's building this track. Um, he just upped the banking in the turns. He found out that the turn banking was only like 22 degrees or something like that. So he put it up to 30. So only one degree off of the actual Daytona banking, which is 31. That's awesome. That's um, awesome. It's really cool. And I mean, this track, he's only got turns three and four and then into the trioval done. But it's just awesome. And, you know, credit to Baron Speedway for putting me onto this guy because he was following him. And um, so, yeah, SC underscore diecast underscore dude on Instagram. And once he posts his YouTube videos, he'll uh, he'll be um, you'll be able to find those on there, too, I'm sure. Um, Don't always agree with everything he posts because sometimes his stuff is a little um, controversial. Occasionally he has he's opinionated. But aside from that, the stuff he's doing is pretty awesome. So. Yeah, Baron Speedway, because I follow him, I stumble across some good stuff. Oh, yeah. I, every once in a while, I just look through the people that Baron Speedway follows just to see who else is doing these dioramas and stuff so I can check them out. Right. I can live vicariously through Baron Speedway and, and all of the people he's following. It's awesome. Did you find yours, James, or no? Uh, I did a quick search, and <laughs> I'm 
struggling. So <laughs> next week I will make sure to get make sure I have the name and make sure people can follow because I am really disappointed with myself, which is not it's par for the course. If you do like me, you'll forget next week. So that's fine. That's probably how it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Did we cover everything? Did we cover everything, dude? I think I think we did in about an hour, like normal. So we, we didn't we didn't shorten it up any, but started a little well, we got, tonight. So. We got we got deep again. Yeah, it's usually how it goes. Yeah. Yep. All right. With that, we go racing this week. A bunch. Shoot, there's five races, guys, between now and the next time we record this podcast. Five ridiculous. races. It's ridiculous. So we got the Cup Series going to Martinsville. Hopefully tomorrow night. Hopefully the weather stays away. And I haven't even seen the forecast. I'm assuming that it's okay, but. Um, who knows? Uh, it's NASCAR, so it'll there'll probably be a threat of rain at least. Um, well, it's a Wednesday race, which is always rained out. <laughs> right, exactly. We at least have to delay yeah. it an hour. Um, big, uh, big shout out to Fox for once again putting it on Fox Sports One because God forbid we interrupt the tag show on on Big Fox <laughs> and run a NASCAR race on it. You guys, that's I'm another rant you. I for can get on. God sakes, some Fox! Point. For God's sakes, you guys have okay. Fox has done such a great job with their coverage. They did a great job of covering iRacing. But two things that Fox does that piss me off, and one is not giving the, putting these races on network TV when there's nothing else on network TV. And the other thing is when there's a freaking rain delay for more than 10 minutes, we start showing last year's race or cut to other programming. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so Martinsville Wednesday night. We go to Homestead, Miami this weekend. Two Xfinity races, a truck race, and a cup race. Uh, we'll be back next week to discuss it all and preview whatever the next race is. I don't know. I can't count. I can't can't count that far ahead. So we'll, we'll just worry, worry about these five, and we'll be back uh, next week to discuss those and preview the rest. Um, James, where can they find you on social media if they want to chat with you during the week? Probably nowhere because I'm going to delete all my social media. <laughs> uh, no, but you can get, you can find me at James Kosh on Twitter if you want to sh- if you want to yell at me. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter as well at T Super Speedway. You can find the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the super speedway. Whoa, <clears throat> dying out here. Oh, uh, well, we're, losing we're losing them. <laughs> Facebook.com slash the super speedway. Uh, the podcast is at www.thesuperspeedway.com. You can find uh, old episodes of the podcast, current episodes, uh, links to the show notes, uh, links to all the articles that uh, we've discussed in today's episode and past ones. Uh, you can find the podcast in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and SoundCloud, wherever you find us today. We hope you subscribe and continue to listen. And if you want to become a part of the show and help us out, help us get to the track when NASCAR decides to let people other than Jim Utter go, um, you can do that at Patre- Patreon by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the super speedway. It's all going downhill, as always. So with that, we'll go to Martinsville tomorrow night, watch some racing there, and then four races at Homestead. We'll be back next week to discuss it all. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. Uh-huh.